I kind of got this idea that we really needed to work for a project with the other degrees involved. You know, it's kind of something we've always talked about doing, but I decided, you know, this is something that needs to happen, kind of, you know, to benefit not only the DV program, but everyone involved. It pretty much takes all the different disciplines of UAT and merges them all together. We have art, we have programming, we have digital video, we have everyone kind of working together to make something, and that doesn't really happen too often at UAT. The idea for the script came from the title. I had this epiphany. I was like, what, what can we call this project? You know, what, is it, what does it mean as a project? And I, it's a cross-discipline project with multiple different groups working together. So I came up with the idea of Cross Realm. That led to motivate the script of your typical adventuring party going through this portal, then they end up in this sci-fi, futuristic, like almost Blade Runner style future. The characters in Cross Realm are motivated from this perspective that I've had of playing Dungeons and Dragons and different RPG type games like that. Each of the characters kind of represents a different trope that comes from those games. You know, you've got your huge hulking barbarian who just smashes everything, your knight, the leader of the group, everybody's favorite, the rogue, the stealthy, sneaky character. The ranger is your survivalist, the expert when it comes to traveling through the woods. And then you've got your monk, the kung fu martial arts expert, the zen balance to the party. And then of course you've got your wizard playing off the party's innocence a little bit. Cross Realm itself was really conceived as a proof of concept, just to test out this process, to see if we could get it all to work. Cross Realm is something that you would typically see in a higher budget film, where they use 3D technology and real life technology and merge them together. And we're doing that here in a college environment with pretty much off the shelf, really low budget technology. To be able to do something that these multi-million dollar films can do in our little setting here is really innovative. The innovation for the project was the system we developed to shoot on the green screen using Unreal Engine to render backgrounds for us live and then composite the green screen footage with the Unreal environments on set. Everybody could see you know, what we're shooting when we're shooting. We were seeing everything in real time so the actors could immediately see playback and see how they were interacting with the, the imaginary environment. So that was great. It actually helped their performances. It just made it easier for them to visualize what it was that they were supposed to be interacting with. I think when you see it right there in front of you, it just kind of makes it more of a reality and I, I think it really helped a lot. I was in Fallout that Paul Denigris directed. That was my first time shooting a movie in front of a green screen. It was just the raw footage with the green screen in the background and you know, we wouldn't be able to see till after. Once you got to see the playback and we saw where we were standing, oh, we should probably stand a little bit more this way, I need to face this way. It was amazing. It, it kind of took away the scary element of the green screen. I think as actors, we all have pretty vivid imaginations, but you can have six or seven people on set and they're all imagining something different. So to be able to show us the environment and say, this is what it's going to look like. We all have a, we can all kind of be on the same page and play off the same things. I would love if every set was like that, because it, it really does help. It was really fascinating how we could see exactly what we were, were doing on the screen. We could go and watch the playback so that when we were looking, we could make sure that we were looking at the right direction. That was really a cool system. Knowing the texture of the rocks and, and what you're walking on, it makes you feel differently about the character and where you are, what your space is, what the atmosphere is that you exist in, and it, it's, it's better. The editing process worked really great because we were able to take a capture from the TriCaster of the real-time composite and take the green only, the, the raw footage from the Black Magic and marry them together, synchronize them in Avid. And so Gwyneth Christopher, who was my editor on the trailer, she was able to look at the real-time composited version of the film instead of looking at just green. She didn't have to guess. She didn't have to wonder, you know, why had I panned all the way over here? What was I supposed to be seeing? She actually could see, you know, that I had panned over to see a part of the environment or whatever the case may have been. So while all the, the technical stuff was going on with Unreal and the TriCaster and the, the sensors and the programming, while all of that stuff was being sorted out, other students were also working on manufacturing the awesome costumes that you see in the trailer. Natasha Stringham and Eric Reed really took point on that. Natasha dealt with all of the textiles, all the fabrics, all of the, the leather and cloth, and she even manufactured boots and just did some really amazing things with not a lot of money. Eric took point on weapons and armor, and we ended up working a lot with thermoplastics like Warbla to build the breastplate for Callian's character and the axe for Bill's character. 
Each of the characters are vastly different and, you know, that's one of the things with the costumes that we tried to, we tried to bring out was that the world is bigger than what you see just in this short thing. All of the actors look different and you can tell that they all come from a different part of the world and so we were really trying to, to bring that out with the way that they look themselves. Absolutely everybody loved their costume. I liked mine. I know that Suzanne was all about trying to take her costume home because she loved it so much and she loved her hood. Absolutely loved, loved the costume, so shout out to uh, Natasha. Overall, I'm really, really pleased with the costumes, um, considering these guys hadn't manufactured fantasy costumes before. I, I think they did a, an amazing job. I would do it again. Yeah, 100%. It was just a great time, and can we get a series going? I want to know what happens next. Because the short leads to something else, I'm interested to see where it goes from there. And that's what any good story should do, is you want to go, oh, what happened to these people after this? I like working with all the students and Paul and my fellow actors. I got to work with a few people I hadn't worked with before. They're a great group of people, very talented and a lot of fun to hang out with. The group of people that you work with in the end is what makes or breaks a project. You see it on the screen, whether you were relaxed, whether you were uh, in the moment. And the actors were wonderful, and the crew was great. The technology, I think, was mind-blowing. I'm really looking forward to it. I really think it's going to turn out to be a great film. The most rewarding part about the whole Cross Realm project has been watching these disparate groups of students from different majors all come together for a, a common goal and really develop their critical thinking skills and their problem solving skills as they tried to do something that nobody's ever done before, uh, at least not at the undergrad level and, and certainly not at UAT.